The Physics of a UFO, a lecture by Jonathan Barlow Gee. Firstly, we see the full exploded diagram showing the relationship from the side of all the systems in the disk craft. From upper left clockwise to lower left, scalar, spiral, sphere, coils in a gyroscope, the propulsion system, control booth, the ship's cabin, crystal sphere spinning with water inside a magnet, the navigation system, sensory deprivation for hypersleep, the sleep chambers or personal quarters, hangar bay for entering and exiting the craft, particle accelerator, the braking system. Here we see a color-coded above view of the disk craft. The living quarters are in green, the propulsion system in red, and the brakes in blue. The first system of the disk craft we shall consider independently in detail is the gravitic drive system, comprised of the geode computer in a fluid suspension inside a metal sphere inside a ring array solenoid tube torus. There are two types of rotational motion for a magnetic dipole. One, shown here above, is centrifugal, and the other, shown here below, is centripetal. The centrifugal motion is mimicked by the rotational motions of the geode in the fluid suspension. The centripetal motion is mimicked by the location of the orb of metal inside the solenoid tube ring array. There are thus also two types of magnetic field emitted by a dipole. One, the straight bar or the single rod with opposite twin poles at either end of a simple axis. Two, the torus such as that formed by centripetal motion of a dipole or the solenoid guidance system of the gravitic drive system of the disk craft UFO. When the twin forms of dipolar motion are combined, all of the regular bipolar rod being inserted into the ring array of the tube torus, the result is the combination of their electromagnetic force fields. When a torus is set into motion along an axis perpendicular to the previous diagram's insertion method, the result is the vectors mapped onto its surface, shown on the right, unfolding into the wave mechanical orthogonal matrix on the left. This wave mechanical multivibrational fabric can likewise be separated out into its constituent emanations or origins at the corner and midpoints along the edges of the matrix square. Because there are four corners and four midpoints along the edges, there are two squares expressed in this model at 45 degrees to one another. Each corner is labeled by the I Ching trigrams and double hexagrams. The centrifugal rotation of the geode inside the orb displays 12 total positions in the first schematic diagram of the UFO's gravitic drive. Because the ring array itself is actually divided into 12 loops of copper coil around the magnetic tube torus. These 12 coils loop around and are broken down into 6 per quarter of the ring array. These provide the mechanism with its navigation capacity. The next system of the disk craft UFO I will be describing is the tachyon propulsion system. The most key component of this system are the three tachyon thrusters, which aim the ship where the driver wants it to go. There are three of them surrounding the ring array, such that they form a triangle of smaller solenoid rings all adjoining the ring array's outer surface. Suspended within a magnetic field inside each of these smaller solenoids, is a copper gyroscope. Each of these three gyroscopes has three great arcs looping 360 degrees around a centroid point. 
Its motions are of the standard gyroscope. When the magnetic field suspending this copper gyroscope in place within these three propulsion solenoids is increased in electrical voltages and amps, each of these three gyroscopes casts six shadows according to the six cardinal directions in three dimensions. The four of these electromagnetic shadows along the craft's horizontal axis can all be canceled out as two express clockwise only motions and two express counterclockwise motions only. To understand how these engines pull space-time into them in one direction, either from above or below, and eject it out the opposite side, one must see how the th three loops in each gyroscope can bend and shape space-time. However, when these rings are aligned rightly, they form by the points of their intersections being extended as axes of symmetry, a hexagram shape. This hexagonal shape is actually a shadow itself of the combination of three plane space triangles, each at 90 degrees to the others. When we graph this moment of perfect intersection as a shadow on a plane space below the gyroscope, we find the presence of gravitational warping to occur. In this schema for the transportation of a body through hyperspace, we see how, as the alignment of these triple angles in the midst of the three-ringed gyroscope converges, the angles of space-time increase around the outer edges, but collapse into a point aligning two corners along the centroid axis. The result of this is that the three rings of each of the three gyroscopic tachyonic thrusters cause such extreme warping interior to them of an electromagnetic field that this field becomes gravitational and capable of propelling itself on tachyons. The various combinations of these three thrusters beams of energy emitting from the disk craft UFO's tachyon propulsion system result in various amounts of warping to the space surrounding them, which induces various different sorts of mental state for those who might happen to be nearby. The primary reason the craft has to have at least three such thrusters to become airborne is simple geometry. The projection from above or below of the midpoint between the horizontal triple angle surrounding the circular ring array extends to form a tetrahedron in each direction, and thus a stellarctahedron from the combination of both. This shape is pivotal in subsequent lectures on the nature of hyperspace time travel. The final system to examine is the skin of fiber optic cable mesh that comprises the surface and outermost layers of the disk craft UFO. It has been said that this can achieve the speed of photons by pulsing an electromagnetic charge through them of a high enough voltage. The method of curling the fiber optic cables into a disk shape surrounding the three engines and ring array allows a single electron charge traveling through one fiber optic strand to travel around the circumference of the ship multiple up to hundreds of times. This actually increases the momentum of the charged particles through the cable rather than decreases it. The rate of increase from the centroid outward along the radius of the craft towards its circumferential edge is neither asymptotic arithmetic nor exponential, but mnemonic.